All right, <clears throat> so in the last video, we uh, defined partial derivatives. We went through one example. Um, when you're studying uh, derivatives in Calculus 1, um, there's, there's a lot of techniques that you learn for uh, how to evaluate them, a lot of rules, you know, product rule, power rule, um, all, all that kind of stuff. And because we're essentially treating these like single variable derivatives by holding our other variables constant, uh, all of those same rules apply. We don't need to go through and derive a bunch of new ones. One other thing that you do in single variable calculus, however, is you do something called implicit differentiation. That's where if you uh, think of y as a function of x, and then you look at an equation that relates x and y, but uh, y is not isolated, we, we call that an implicit equation. And you can still differentiate with respect to x, but you might have to solve for dy dx or something like that. So we're gonna do something similar here. It's just the partial derivative version of implicit differentiation. And it's really, it's really not any different. It's not any more difficult, I don't think. Um, so let's just kind of go to an example. Let's, under, let's suppose that z is understood to be a function of x and y. And we have this equation here, x squared minus y squared plus z squared minus 2z equals 4. Now, x and y are independent variables, but it's really important to remember z represents a function of x and y in this case, in this context. What we want to do is find the partial of z with respect to x and the partial of z with respect to y. So to start with, to find the partial of z with respect to x, just like you do in different uh, implicit differentiation in calculus one, I want to differentiate that in both sides of that equation, x squared minus y squared plus z squared minus two z. I want to differentiate with respect to x on both sides. Okay, now uh, this would become two x. Y is a variable, it's not a function of x. And because we're differentiating with respect to x, that means we hold y constant. So as a constant, this goes to zero now. Um, this guy, z squared, is z is not a constant, it's a function of x and y. So I'd use something similar to the chain rule to differentiate. I uh, differentiate z squared to get 2z, and then I multiply by the derivative of z, which is going to look like the partial of z with respect to x, okay? This is equal to zero, because I'm differentiating a constant on the right-hand side. Solving this for the partial of z with respect to x is very, very straightforward. I get that the partial of z with respect to x is equal to negative uh, x over z after simplifying, okay? So there's one answer right out the gate. Um, partial of z with respect to y, we're also asked to find that. Same process, I differentiate with respect to y instead. So I get x squared minus y squared plus z squared. I run into some trouble here because my z's and my 2's look so similar. I have to consciously make them, my 2's look a little different. Okay, so again, differentiating this guy. Notice that's being treated like a constant, my x, so that goes to 0. Um, I differentiate negative y squared to get negative 2y. And then same thing happens with z. 2z partial of z. This time I it differentiated with respect to y. So it's partial of z with respect to y. That gives me a 0. Solving for my partial of z with respect to y, I get positive y over z. So it's y over z. Okay, and that's it. Nothing fancy. Okay. Um, Again, kind of mimicking what we do in Calculus 1, uh, as you practice derivatives and start working with them a little bit, you learn that there's these things called higher derivatives. And basically, it's what happens if you differentiate a function and then you decide that you want to differentiate it, differentiate it again any number of times. So we have the same thing with partial derivatives. The interesting thing, though, is that uh, you, when you differentiate or take the partial derivative of a function that's already been differentiated, you can choose which variable you want to differentiate it with the next time. So here's what I mean by that. Let's suppose that you have some function f of xy, um, and we've evaluated the partial derivatives f of, uh, fx and fy. I can take fx, for example, 
because it's also a function of x and y, and I can differentiate it either with respect to x or with respect to y. And what this means is that if I'm looking at a, any particular function of two variables, there's a total of four different second, uh, second derivatives I could be talking about, second partial derivatives. So, for example, if I have, uh, if I differentiate with respect to x, and then take that and differentiate with respect to x a second time, the typical notation we use is f x x. Notice there's similar notation here, f11. We typically don't use that one in this class. Um, there's the operator notation. Remember, we've already differentiated with respect to x, and now we're differentiating with respect to x again. Uh, this is Leibniz notation with, uh, you'll see the similarity between these two and what you, uh, Leibniz notation in um, single variable calculus. Here's uh, what we call a mixed partial. So these two are mixed partial derivatives or mixed partials. And what that means is that you're taking a second derivative, but the variable that you differentiate with respect to in the second step of taking that second derivative is different than the one you differentiated with to begin with. So here, I differentiate with respect to x first, and then I get a function of x and y. I take that and I differentiate it with respect to y next, to the other variable. Um, we think of those, or we write those partials as f of x, or f x y is typically how I read that. You can use a one two in place of an x y. We're generally not going to do that. Um, no, notice in the subscript here. As you read the subscript from left to right, it's telling you the order in which you're taking these derivatives. First with respect to x, second with respect to y. Um, I bring that up because it's the reverse order when you look at Leibniz notation. Normally, the denominator in Leibniz notation tells you which variable you're differentiating with respect to. However, if you're, cha if you're uh, beginning with a differ uh, derivative with respect to x, then you actually get the x showing up last. If you, sh if you then differentiate with respect to y after that, the y is going to show up first. And the reason is because of this. It's the operator notation. So again, if I differentiate my function f with respect to x, now I have the partial of f with respect to x. Operator notation, if I wanted to differentiate that new function with respect to y, I would write the partial with respect to y out here, okay? So if you imagine kind of smushing this operator into this, this uh, derivative right here, the uh, partial, the, the y down here is still going to show up first like it does here. It's, it can be a little bit confusing, but when it's in Leibniz notation, the order in which you're differentiating goes from right to left. Subscript notation goes from left to right. Okay, and you'll notice we have the other two cases down here. Um, so, let's take an example of a function and do exactly this. Let's find all of the second partial derivatives of f. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just finding fx and fy. Because those will be uh, kind of the ingredients for doing this fx, what's the partial derivative of this function with respect to x? Well, I can see that this first term only contains an x. That would give me 6x squared. Here, I'm differentiating with respect to x, which means the y cubed is being considered a constant. This would give me minus 4x cubed, differentiated the, the x to the fourth there, y cubed, okay? And the 4y is the whole thing is going to be treated like a constant, so that's just going to go to zero, and I get this. Now let me differentiate with respect to y. So in this case, the first term is being treated like a constant, so it goes to zero. My second term, I differentiate only with respect to y, holding x constant. That gives me negative x, uh, sorry, negative three x to the fourth y squared. And then finally, differentiating this guy gives me plus 4. That's with respect to y. Okay? Now I'm going to compute my four uh, partial derivatives. What is fxx? My four second partial derivative, sorry. Well, this says if you take fx and then differentiate it again with respect to x, that's what we're, we should be getting here. So this is what I'm differentiating with respect to x again. That's going to give me 12x uh, minus 12 x squared y cubed. Okay, what about f uh, x y? Well, same function. I'm starting with f x, but this time I'm differentiating with respect to y. 
Um, this first term is going to be considered constant, so it's going to go away. And I differentiate this with respect to y, which gives me negative 12x cubed y squared. Okay, now let's do fyx next. Okay, um, fyx. So here's fy, and then I differentiate that function with respect to x. So uh, what would that look like? Here I'm holding y constant. x is what I'm differentiating with respect to. This become negative 12 uh, x cubed y squared, and then that's a constant, so that's going to go to 0. All right, finally, f, y, y, what would that be? Same function differentiating with respect to y now. This is going to become negative 6x to the fourth y. Okay? Polynomials are the easiest things to integrate generally, so that wasn't too bad. Um, I want to point something out, though. Look at the mixed partials. Remember, these are the mixed partials where you mix the variables uh, that you're differentiating with respect to. It came out to the same thing. f of x, y ended up being the same thing as f of y, x. Was that a coincidence? Well, the answer is no. That actually will generally happen. And there's a theorem that states that. We call it Clairaut's theorem, stated here. So there's, there's a condition in place that we're never really going to have to check explicitly, but it is important because Clairaut's theorem doesn't work for every single two-variable function. It only works for functions that satisfy this initial condition here. So suppose f is defined on a disk D that contains the point A, B. If the mixed partials f of x, y, and, or f, x, y, and f, y, x are both continuous on D, then those mixed partials will be equal to each other at that point, A, B. Um, so again, that's not this, this initial hypothesis or condition that we're stating here does need to be in place, but all of the functions that we're going to be dealing with this in, in this class will already satisfy that, and you're never going to need to check it. So we're just going to kind of move forward, assuming any time we deal with mixed partials, they're always going to be equal. F, X, Y will always equal F, Y, X. Okay? All right. A little bit left to cover here. We're almost done. So um, one thing that we, can also, we should also talk about is uh, partial derivatives of functions of three variables. Because... Right now, or up until this point, we've only dealt with functions of two variables. The process is really the exact same thing. So here we're looking at a function of three variables, f of x, y, z equals sine of x, y plus y, z squared. And we're doing a couple of derivatives here. I want to start by finding f, x of this function. What is f, x of x, y, z? Look at my first function. Um, we're only differentiating with respect to x, so that means I'm holding y and z constant. This term right here doesn't have any x's in it, so that means the entire thing is being held constant. When I differentiate, that whole thing goes to zero. So really, only this first term is going to matter for this guy. Differentiating with respect to x means we're holding this y constant, and so the derivative by the chain rule would be y cosine of xy. Okay, now let's do this one. This is a second derivative, fzy. So we first need fz of xyz. Uh, what would that be? Well, this first term has no z's in it at all. So the entire thing goes to zero. This guy, differentiating with respect to z, gives me 2yz. Now, I differentiate with respect to y. So that gives me f z y of x y z equals, again, differentiating with respect to y next, 2z. So these are my two answers here. All right. Cool. So last thing that we want to talk about, and we're not going to do much with this in this class, but it is an extremely, extremely important area of math. One of the biggest areas of modern mathematics, actually. It's partial differential equations. Um, in calculus uh, one, you are introduced to the concept of differential equations. You really don't do a whole lot with it in that class. Calculus two, you spend a little bit more time talking about 
differential equations and how to solve them. Um, you're only doing the most basic ones. You, you learn about separable equations in Calculus 2. Depending on your instructor, you might do a little bit more than that too. But um, those, are, those are examples of what we call ODEs, or, or um, Ordinary Differential Equations. Those are differential equations that involve derivatives of a, uh, functions of a single variable. Um, partial differential equations are equations in which uh, partial derivatives of a multivariable function make an appearance. And again, we're not going to do much with them in this class, but we do want to know how to verify if a given function is a solution to a partial differential equation. So as an example, um, your book talks about a couple of examples in the text. There's really just one I want to focus on. It's, it's, it's a huge area of study, just this one equation, it turns out. Um, but uh, th it's this PDE, which is short for partial differential equation, uh, differential equations. Second partial of u with respect to x both times plus the par second partial of u with respect to y both times equals zero. That is a partial differential equation. It involves partial derivatives of the multivariable function u, which is a function of x and y. Okay, there are a lot of functions that satisfy this equation, and the ones that do have very interesting properties, both mathematically and in applications. Um, functions that are solutions to this equation in particular, Laplace's equation, are called harmonic functions. So what we're going to do is, as a final example here, take a look at a couple of functions and determine whether or not they are harmonic. We do that by uh, determining whether or not they satisfy Laplace's equation. So how do we do that? Well notice I'm looking at partial derivatives, second partials of my functions, with respect to both variables, but there are no mixed partials in here. So I need fx here. fx for this function, pretty easy to see, it would be 2x. I also need fxx. That was the point of getting fx. That would be 2. Easy enough to see why. What is fy? Well, again, holding x constant, that goes away. I get negative 2y in this case fyy is then equal to negative 2. So what is Laplace's equation with these functions? Again, it's my second partial with respect to x both times plus my second partial with respect to y both times, and we want that to equal 0. Is that the case here? Well, in the notation I'm using, that would look like fxx plus fyy, which is equal to 2 minus 2, based on what we just found. That is equal to 0. And so this is a uh, solution to Laplace's equation, making it a harmonic function. So x squared minus y squared is an example of a harmonic function. Um, what about this function here, x cubed plus 3xy squared? I go through the same process, find fx, what is that? That would be 3x squared, uh, again holding y constant and differentiating with respect to x, this would become 3 y squared. So 3x squared plus 3y squared. What is fxx then? Uh, fxx would be 6x and then notice this 3y squared is a constant or it's treated as a constant and so it goes away completely. All right now let's do fy. The x cubed here is being held constant so it disappears and then I get uh, from differentiating with respect to y here, 6xy, and then differentiate with respect to y a second time, holding x constant, I get 6x. Okay, so Laplace's equation, what does that look like? fxx plus fyy equals 6x plus 6x, which is what we got for those. That equals 12x, which is not equal to the zero function. It's not equal to zero. So this is not harmonic. Okay, that's going to be it for 14.3.